What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So, DE snuck in some changes to the Ascension game mode last week, and I didn't really have time to cover them, but it did change how fast Ascension game mode is played, and kind of the meta as far as overcharging the elevator. So let's get right into those changes today, and go over the current strategy for overcharging, and basically doing these missions as fast as possible. We have a new best time for my clan, 5 minutes, 9 seconds on one run. And honestly, with these strategies today, I think sub-5 minutes might actually be possible on this new game mode. So let's get right into it. Just a heads up though, I did also change my one-shot Zephyr build here as well, just to make it... Because I've had to complain, people saying it's a little bit hard to one-shot the Lich. Um, I've made it a little bit easier for you guys today too. So let's get right into what we have. So what did DE change with the Ascension game mode? It's going to mainly involve them changing how the overcharge mechanic works on the elevator. Uh, and it actually, there is a particular way you want to do it to get the most out of it now. Um, but yeah, the main thing is it's actually easier than ever to keep the elevator overcharged after the previous change. So the big thing here is that if you've been watching the previous Ascension Guides, you would know that there are two different types of power cells for this elevator. I'll see if we can get to that part in the footage. So there's going to be the, the extremely glowing green overcharger cells, and there's the not very bright at all normal cells. So the guaranteed cell they give at the beginning of this, this elevator is an overcharger cell. So when you throw that first overcharger cell at the elevator, you'll be getting, I think it's like 10 seconds of overcharge time. Now the key to getting the most overcharge for your overchargers here is going to involve you taking every second, every secondary uh, overcharger and utilizing that when the elevator is no longer currently overcharged. So to put that, to make that very simple, do not throw an overcharger at the elevator until it's about to be at zero. Why do you, why would I recommend this over, just overcharging it while it's already overcharged? If you have the elevator already overcharged, you will get 10 seconds from that singular overcharger cell. But if you wait until the elevator is at zero and just it recently stopped being overcharged, you will get 20 seconds of overcharge from one cell. So the key here is to wait until it's about at zero. Don't throw it when it's at one. Throw it when it's at zero. You will be overcharged for like half. You will not be overcharged for like half a second, but you're getting 20 seconds from one overcharger, unlike 10 seconds from a singular overcharger. Still be aware that, like, you know, having a designated overcharger camping on the elevator is probably one of the smarter ways to do this. But, yeah, um, if you're not having that much organization, I guess it's not that big of a deal if you waste, you know, 10-second overcharge here and there. But, yeah, really, guys, when that timer hits zero on the overcharger timer, which is a new thing, that's when you throw your overcharger, okay? So it's more straightforward and easier than ever. Same strategy as before. Have Wukong flying around, grabbing the overchargers. You know, have Zephyr grabbing the overchargers. The big thing here is just don't throw the cell until you see it no longer overcharged because you're getting double value from your overcharger cells if you can do that. Beyond that, not really much has changed. DE has kept in the one shot from last guide with, you know, I'm using currently using Zephyr to one shot. There's other strategies too, but until, you know, those are actually needed, we're going to keep that one as the main strategy. Yeah. So your designated overcharge just be watching constantly making sure that the thing is about to be not overcharged, then you throw it on there. Now, you can stack the overcharger up to 30 seconds, but again, that's going to be a little bit less efficient as far as use of your overcharger cells. Um, overcharger cells do require you to go find them in the environment. They do not drop from enemies. That did not change either. So it's just, you know, it's less effort for your teammates. Like, bringing, bringing normal cells to the elevator is hardly worth it. You only really care about overchargers when you're doing this min-max. Now, our elevator ran out of overcharger cells, unfortunately, but partially me not really helping too much. So if you if you are the overcharger, make sure you're paying attention because you are the one influence how long the mission takes. In the five minute, nine second one, the elevator was literally overcharged the entire time, okay? So the more you overcharge it, the faster you'll go. And yeah, as long as if you're one shutting like I was in the video the other day too, that's gonna be a great way to save yourself some time. Now in this footage, I did not one shot because I did the timing wrong. I think we had like a weird load time or something like that. But I'm going to show you the new setup to make the one-shotting easier than ever, okay? So right there. It had 1% health. I did a double double slam attack because I probably I had an 11x multiplier. So yeah, on this previous build, you had to have like everything stacked up, everything like 
vigorous swap, currently proc, all that stuff. On the new one today, guys, it will be a lot easier, a lot less effort required to one-shot that Lich. Okay, so let's get right into the, the new Zephyr one-shot build. Now, compared to my old Zephyr build, it is going to be a little bit slower movement speed-wise. There's definitely some annoyance factors to it. But overall, yeah, easier one-shot on the Lich, which is the main reason you're bringing Zephyr in the first place, at least for me. All right, let's go into what we have here. All right, so as far as the Zephyr build... Uh, it is extremely similar to the previous Zephyr build, but we mainly changed out a couple mods here. The mods that we changed out are going to be the Slam Attack Damage mods. So, still got the Frag War Prime as our one-shot weapon. Still got a whatever whatever secondary you want to bring as your, like, and clear weapon. And still have the Rauta to get easy combo multiplier from shooting this thing. You get, like, 20 combo per shot with this. But yeah, on Zephyr specifically, we have one Purple Equilibrium Shard. If you need an easier one-shot, you can put a Purple Crit Damage Shards if you want to. But reminder, in the previous video, we did not need any Purple Crit, uh, crit Shards to one-shot the Lich. Now, as far as the actual Zephyr build itself, the things that were changed out are going to be these Nera mods. So, these give Slam Damage Increase. And these are multiplicative Slam Damage Increase. So, now that we have Nera's Hatred and Nera's Anguish on the build, we replaced... Uh, jet Stream for increased movement speed and Anchored Glide disables Zephyr's annoying floating passive. If you are able to accept the fact you'll be moving slower with no Jet Stream and you'll have to deal with Zephyr's floaty passive, you get a lot, you get 200% multiplicative melee damage on your slam attacks, which is pretty darn good. So, with these combined together, you'll be one shot the Lich a lot easier. You might not even need Vigorous Swap after buffing it that much, but I still got Vigorous Swap on here. Do a lay attack to swap to it and then slam attack them in that one, or in those three seconds. So, Either way, you got 200% damage now, multiplicative on your slam attacks. Very good. Zatan's Whisper for a second hit of damage help bypass damage attenuation. And you still need Funnel Clouds for that big, big damage when enemies inside the tornadoes. Rolling Guard's not needed. A lot of this stuff's not needed. It's mainly just buffing your damage to having Funnel Clouds on this build. As far as the actual other builds, the Rauta is going to be still exactly the same. I did throw on the new Shotgun Elementalist mod. Why? Because it gives you more magazine. The more magazine you have, the, bit, the better you can build your combo. Then you can get like 27 combo maximum with multi-shot on here. You got a multi-shot ribbon. So the more magazine size, the better. Magazine size here, magazine size here. And I think it's the only magazine size mods in the game, actually. So, yeah. But yeah, this is great for just building your combo really, really fast. Which is kind of helpful because I'm rarely actually paying attention in this game because it's so boring. The Lieutenant Cyclone, I got a magnetic roll. This is just kind of decent for killing uh, random, like, corpus enemies. We've got uh, Magnetic Viral Heat. And really anything will do. You don't even need to really kill enemies here. Just, you can use your Elite On Call to take care of all the enemies. The Frag War Prime still using this. Other weapons will work. But uh, hammers do have very high damage per hit. So I'd probably recommend a hammer still. We've got a Gas Build on here. Because Prime Fever Strike is a lot of elemental damage. We also got Melee Exposure for 100, uh, for 240% Corrosive damage. Now, for Slam Attack mods, I technically could throw on a Slam Attack mod instead of Killing Blow. So instead of 120% Melee damage and Heavy Attack... And wind up speed, we get 200% melee slam damage. That's probably better. Let's just throw that on there for right now. So now our slam attack went from 17,000 damage to 28,000 damage. So not too bad, but the wind up speed is reduced. But yeah, slam attack damage mods are going to be really, really powerful for our slam attacks here. And the rest of the stuff is just pretty self self explanatory. The enemy is a corpus, so we use ban the corpus. Prime pressure point for a bunch of extra damage. Crit damage because we're using crits. And we've got a double crit heavy attack efficiency ridden with minus status chance. If you don't have this, uh, that's I mean, we're, we are buffing a lot more now, so you could probably just take it off, I suppose. But if you don't have a ribbon with good stats, you're going to want to throw on like another crit mod there or something. Like maybe maybe Gladder Might, or maybe something that gives... Maybe, even, maybe you can just put Killing Blow back on in that slot. Either way, you want to replace that crit image somehow. If you can't, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But yeah, with with the combination of the, new, the, the Nero mods on here now, guys, it should be a lot easier of a one-shot when you don't have a ribbon or anything like that. So tons. Of, so we got a total of 400% slam damage now. We'll be hitting really, really hard. So as far as the big changes to the Ascension mode, it's really going to be mainly the Overcharger. The Overcharger is a pretty big deal um, as far as the differences that they made to it. And it is ultimately making Ascension a lot easier and a lot more chill. You don't have to like... You don't have to be, like, super, super meticulous about your Overcharger. Like, oh, is the Overcharger about to run out? You, we were kind of just going in blind before. Like, we don't know how much Overcharger's left. Now there's a timer. It makes it a lot more straightforward. And, yeah, you can actually grind out your Arcanes a lot more simple now. So, event's still going to be around for a couple days, or a couple weeks, I mean. And, uh, yeah, after that, we'll see what happens with Tenocon. So, 
Hope you guys found this video at least somewhat interesting and helpful. It's not the most fun event. It's, it's not meant, like, even DE knows. They're like, all right, throw in the alerts. Let people do alerts instead of grinding this elevator because it gets really boring fast. But at least we are a little bit more efficient now after these changes. So I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll be streaming the first Ascendant. Uh, we're probably live right now, actually. So come on to the top of the live stream channel. Now that we guys, I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Peace.